A roar of an explosion ripped through SpaceX's rocket testing facility in Boca Chica, Texas on Monday. The incident began around 4.20 p.m. CDT when Super Heavy Booster 7, or its launch mount, unintentionally ignited a cloud of flammable gas produced during a flow test involving most, if not all, of its 33 Raptor engines. When the resulting cloud of well-mixed methane and oxygen gas was accidentally ignited, it functioned like a small fuel-air bomb, rapidly combusting to produce a violent explosion and shockwave. After the initial explosion, the fire also expanded to burn as much of the resulting gas as possible, producing a fireball that briefly reached 80 to 90 meters in height. Flames burst from the engines and an explosion sounded in the air, shaking the cameras that were recording the test from a distance. CEO Elon Musk, apparently not directly participating in the test, initially stated that the explosion and fire were planned, implying it was more or less a nominal outcome. Yes, booster engine testing, he said. But others weren't convinced the fireball was meant to happen. I'm probably wrong, but surely ignition was not planned with those lifts right by the pad and such, NASA Spaceflight's Michael Baylor tweeted. To preserve the safety of the few local residents still living at Boca Chica Village, SpaceX is required to issue printed safety warnings well in advance of Starship tests that could create a shockwave capable of shattering glass and injuring locals. SpaceX has never intentionally performed such a test without distributing those warnings and did not distribute a warning before July 11th, all but guaranteeing that no ignition event was planned. A few hours later, Musk deleted his original tweet and posted a different one, confirming that the explosion was actually not good and that SpaceX is assessing the damage. He also explained, Cryogenic fuel is an added challenge as it evaporates to create fuel-air explosion risk in a partially oxygen atmosphere like Earth. That said, we have a lot of sensors to detect this. More later. For the most part, Booster 7 and the Starbase Orbital Launch Site exceeded viewers' expectations of their sturdiness, exhibiting very little off-nominal behavior after being subjected to an unexpected explosion, shockwave, and fire. Immediately after the event, B-7 quickly depressurized its propellant tanks and appeared to have left the vents open, reducing the chances of the booster destroying itself if SpaceX were to lose control. SpaceX also appeared to initially avoid using the orbital launch mount's umbilical mechanism to remove propellant from the Super Heavy's tanks, perhaps concerned that the shockwave might have weakened its connection to B-7. About an hour after the explosion, B-7 dumped a large amount of cryogenic liquid out of a new vent located on its aft end, producing a flood that spread around the adjacent pad. It's unclear if that liquid was nitrogen or oxygen, but either way, the emergency propellant dump appeared to cause a fire to start about 30 meters from the booster and launch mount. The fire proceeded to burn intermittently for the next two hours, all the while posing a clear and present danger to the rest of the pad and booster if it were to spread in the wrong direction or breached the wrong underground pipe. Thank goodness SpaceX got lucky and the fire eventually self-extinguished. Despite that, the fate of B-7 is still unclear. It's likely that B-7 experienced some sort of damage during the explosion, whether it be to the dozens of Raptor engines or the booster itself. Most likely both. But SpaceX will still need to fix or replace the booster and determine the cause of the anomaly. But of course, we can't rule out the possibility that SpaceX will let B-7 retire amongst its brethren in the Starbase Rocket Garden. In addition, it's also not clear if the incident damaged the launch mount, which is equipped with a pair of mechanical arms known as chopsticks, when we spotted some unknown objects dropping from them in the explosion. Regardless, SpaceX will need to figure out what exactly caused this explosion and make sure that failure mode does not appear again. As a little bit of luck, based on the crazy production and assembly rate at SpaceX, Musk still has some backup options. Typically, B-8 was fully stacked in high bay a few days ago. The vehicle is also a contender to perform the first orbital flight test of the Starship Super Heavy system, and it now is perfectly capable of replacing the B-7. However, it's worth noting that Monday's test was one of many that the rocket booster must complete successfully in order to fly safely. This is far from the first fiery explosion at SpaceX's South Texas facilities, which are intended for early rocket prototype testing. And although the FAA did not immediately respond to a request for comment asking if they will investigate the apparent explosion, as Reuters space reporter Joey Roulette tweeted, Whoop, this might delay Starship's first orbital flight a smidge. 
But now let's move on to something more uplifting. As a piece of amazing news, President Biden just unveiled the first full color image to come from the James Webb Space Telescope. The image shows a galaxy cluster called SMACS 0723, which is about four and a half billion light years away. The cluster acts as a gravitational lens, bringing into view far more distant galaxies, some of which appear in the image as arcs. As NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said, we're looking back more than 13 billion years. The NASA statement accompanying the image release didn't give specifics on the more distant galaxies visible in the image, which involved 12 and a half hours of images taken at several wavelengths. The Big Bang took place an estimated 13.8 billion years ago, meaning those distant galaxies date back to when the universe was less than a billion years old. The detail in the image comes from a very tiny part of the sky. If you held a grain of sand on the tip of your finger at arm's length, that is the part of the universe you're seeing. Just one little speck of the universe, Nelson said. Biden appeared pleased by what he saw and by the performance of JWST. It symbolizes the relentless spirit of American ingenuity and it shows what we can achieve, what more we can discover. These images are going to remind the world that America can do big things. This telescope is one of humanity's great engineering achievements, added Vice President Kamala Harris. Both she and Biden emphasized the role of international cooperation in JWST's development, including how, according to Harris, a scientific endeavor can build upon the international rules and norms that govern our cooperation in space. Scientists and others also were immediately impressed with the image. According to Macarena Garcia Marin, an ESA instrument scientist for a mid-infrared instrument on JWST, also known as MIRI, in an ESA statement, this is just a first glimpse of what Webb can do. While we are truly in awe today of Webb's first deep field, I can't help but think of what images and science results are just around the corner in the many years to come. The deep field image was originally scheduled to be released today with other early release observations. In other words, a new era of seeing deeper into the universe than ever before has begun. And with that, Today's episode has come to an end. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.